Well, here's something new to add to your fall reading list. Today, a local New York Times bestselling author is out with a new book. Yeah, and a, a little bit more as well. We have a, a few different gadgets out here. So The Ways We Hide is a World War II tale that follows an illusionist who is recruited by British intelligence. I love the idea around that already. Portland author Christina McMorris joining us in the studio now. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so, so excited to have you here. Um, okay, before we get started with everything else that you kind of have in yes. store here, let's launch into the book. Uh, okay. what, what, the, the Ways We Hide. What is right. the story behind it? Ta tell us about the main character. Absolutely, yeah. So the main character is Fenefoss. She's a Dutch immigrant's daughter. And like you said, she's a, an illusionist. And actually, she is the mastermind behind an escape show in 1942. Okay. Because of her skill sets, and it all traces back to a childhood trauma she survived in Michigan's Copper Country, that she learned how to be good at escape. And because of this skill set, she is recruited by MI9, which, as you mentioned, is the British military intelligence group. And they were responsible for escape and evade devices during World War II. Wow. wow. Yes. What an interesting concept. Yeah. yeah. yeah so so, so this, this novel, I mean, a really, really cool idea for a story, but it's actually based on some true accounts? Yeah, absolutely. So wow. all of this is based on truth. Uh, the, the Michigan's Copper Country tragedy called the yeah. Italian Hall disaster was a true story, sadly. Oh, my gosh. And so that's all in the story, but also, all of this stuff that I'm about to show you yeah. is all based on true accounts as so well. So was this all, this? these were things that you found in, in researching for this novel? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, eBay oh my became gosh. my friend. Wow. <laughs> that is so cool. This is so all wild. kinds of great stuff. So do you want me to show you some I of this? I would love Please. this, okay. yeah. It's so fun. So this is a good day at work when I get to play with these yeah. things and it's research. So, <laughs> so first I'll show you the Monopoly board. So okay. this is what helped inspire the whole book in the first place. Wow. Because when I found out that Monopoly boards help smuggle escape and evade devices inside the board uh -huh. for allied POWs to help escape uh -huh. and also downed airmen in occupied zones to evade Nazi capture with some of this other equipment. Wow. So what they would do is inside the board, even though it's so thin, yeah. they would carve into the board, the engineers would, and they would put in two files, uh, a compass and a map. And I'll show you the map because this is so cool. Do you want to uh, sure, show this? Sure, sure. So this is what would go in the Monopoly board. Absolutely. And so you can see how thin it is. It's yeah. made oh of gosh. silk. And the reason why they, they printed on silk oh was gosh. ingenious. First of all, they could print it in color, which of course is helpful. The other reason is because it's so thin and it withstands the weather, so rain dropping in puddles, et cetera. And most importantly, if you crinkle it, see what happens. Oh, okay. There is no rustling like it would with paper. So oh, it helps so not give you away. You don't have the noise factor. You got it. Absolutely. I don't know if you can wow. see that on this other camera here. And it, yeah, so it's printed just like a yeah, um, yeah just like a, a map would be, but it's not uh, it's not going to you know run and, and yeah, fall apart like paper would. And it's double sided. Sure wow. thing. And you could also sew then sew these into your uniforms too. Sure. So the awesome. airmen would have it instead of their tunics. I oh can't believe gosh. that would go in yeah. a yeah, monopoly board. Yeah. That is that all is so that. fascinating. Oh and here is the the uh, currency, obviously from mm -hmm. Monopoly we're all familiar with. Monopoly money, right? Uh -huh. Which, yes. Uh -huh. What we're not familiar with is the fact that they would also sometimes put foreign currency within that money. Mm -hmm. So you could, so if you escaped, you could then buy a train ticket or try to get out. I so see. It was super wow. important that way. And so these are all elements yeah. that you put into your book. These yes. kinds of you, you, you really show how this was done. Yeah. So my character is a genius at creating these kind of things, mm -hmm. and so she creates, she helps do this, and then some of these other things that I'll show you. So this is just a typical playing card. Okay. You can see, right? Yeah. Now. For the sake of television, uh -huh. magically, I soak this in water, and a couple minutes later, this is what happens. It splits apart, and now you have 52 cards that split in half, and you can create an entire map. Oh, oh my no gosh, they make a map with the cards. Here, yeah. I, I don't know if you're here. Let me hold these up. Yeah. So you take a normal playing card, right? And this, and then you would, you know, you soak it in water, yeah. and then you just, I mean, there's your, there's your king of spades. It splits it in half. Apart. Yeah. And oh so imagine my if you have 52 gosh. of them, and then you double that, so now you've got a whole map. And this was actually designed by a real illusionist who did work for British intelligence. Oh my really? Gosh. So that's how that came about. How do people yeah. come up with this? I know. That that is so smart. Wild. So smart. And then so here's another fun one. Okay, so here's the shaving kit, obviously, okay. that the POWs then would have on them. Okay. Now here is a razor that is magnetized. And then what they would do is all you need is a little bit of water then, and it would spin, and you see that arrow in the middle? Uh-huh. Will then help point north. Oh, so yeah, so it's probably tough to see on that bird's eye camera, but for those, if I don't know how much we can yeah. zoom in, but there's an arrow right in the middle of it. Wow. And so it's pointing that pointing way. That way. And then, <laughs> so you could so even that would drop that into like a puddle in the ground it. and it would, and it, and and it that's would what, go and point north. Yep. Yep. That is so, that's so cool. That is ingenious. All right, to one me. other one. Fun yeah, one? We, yeah, we have okay. time for one more. One more. Okay, here you go. 
So here is um, like a, an RAF, so Royal Air Force okay. Airmen's watch. Uh -huh. And so you open it up. It looks like a real watch. It's actually not a working one. And so hopefully they can see this. And I'll pass this to you in case you want to show okay. that. And that is a compass that floats in water inside. Oh my wow. gosh. And this was, I mean, you also think about the era of this. I mean, a, a, a compass, obviously, before yeah. you could pull it up on a smartphone. This yeah. is this is probably life or death, yeah. you know, in terms oh. of being able to get out. Absolutely. absolutely. So this is, that is absolutely incredible. And yeah. so, and, so and you cool. encapsulate you encapsulate that in, 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 in your book here. For so sure. You got to, so wow. you're, you're going to, you read this story and you're you're reading about things that were actually used uh, <laughs> behind enemy lines and, and yes. to escape from danger. That is so cool. Real quick, you're kicking off uh, your yes. book tour with two local events yes. this week. Absolutely. So one is tonight at uh -huh. Clackamas Barnes and Noble. Okay. So it's at six o'clock, and I'll be showing this and a whole presentation of a lot more of this stuff. Very cool. And then tomorrow night at Powell's Cedar Hills, and that's at seven o'clock, and same kind of thing. And I'll be showing even more there too. Oh, oh my gosh! That so is if, so if fun. We've piqued your interest here. So much more to learn, and of course, uh, a fun story to get lost in in a new novel. Author Christina McMorris. Thank you thank so you. much for coming in. Thank Great you to have me. you. And if you want to check out uh, again more about the book tonight and tomorrow, she's kicking off a fifteen state book tour with those two local events. Six o'clock at the Barnes & Noble in the Clackamas Town Center tonight and tomorrow, 7 p.m. at Powell's Books at Cedar Hills Crossing in Beaverton. We'll have more details too on Coin News AMX, so you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram.